Well, I'm Chris and this is my automotive wiring from scratch part three, the ignition system. So each one of these parts does exactly the same thing. So this is a GM HEI module. We all know what that is. And this is the mechanical ignition box for this car. And we're gonna go ahead and run it. So all these do is get a signal from the distributor and they ground out the coil, sending a spark to whatever plug wire it's going to. So whatever ignition box you're using, you're gonna have to figure your wires out. MSD has it on the bottom, and there's a whole bunch of videos on the internet with the GMHEI. So the early Datsuns had point ignition. This 78280Z has electronic ignition. That's a magnetic pickup coil. This is magnetic. This is steel. Every time one of those little fingers runs past it, it sends a signal. These are your magnetic pickup coil wires, and we have red and green. So you have to understand your coil 100%. This is a 78280Z. And even though they came with balance resistors, it uses a 12 volt coil. This coil came off of a 240Z and it's a six volt coil. You have to understand that because you can burn your coil up. So the ignition control box on this car goes under the dash, but we're gonna mount it out here for the video. So the ignition system starts with the ignition switch. And if you have a 12 volt coil, all you worry about is the ignition position on the switch. That's it. So if you have a six volt coil, you need to look for an I or an R position. On this 280Z, we have an R position. So our battery is 12 volts, but our coil uses six volts. So it has to go through a ballast resistor. It's gonna knock it down to six to nine to power our coil. If we don't do that, we're gonna burn our coil up. Even though we're using the factory transistor ignition box, even if you were gonna use an HEI control module, you're using the same wires and just in different places. So we brought the ignition box up because just like this HEI, we have to power it with ignition off from the key. So we have to run power to this one too. So our ignition 12 volt wire is gonna to go to our ballast resistor, but we need to put two wires in one terminal and run the other one to power our transistor box. So all this stuff is 16, 18 gauge in the car. I'll run thicker 12 gauge in case I wanna change this stuff out. The wire will be there and ready. All right, so then our 12 volts come into the ballast resistor, knocking it down to six to nine. And then this continues over to the positive side of our coil. When you're cranking your starter, yay, 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 it'll give 12 volts of the coil extra power to help it start. And this is very, very important. Some cars will have I or R on the starter solenoid, like under the hood, and that's where they'll run this yellow wire. But on this Datsun, they actually run it from the key switch. So this comes off of I or R, starter solenoid, or your ignition switch if you have it, and it's gonna be joined right there. So whenever we're cranking our engine, yay, 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 we're giving power 12 volts to both of these wires. And you see how this one is bypassing the ballast resistor. So it's not reducing it down, it's going straight over here, 12 volts, just while we crank. And this wire is so important. I've had cars that would not start up without hooking that up. So now the positive side of our coil is figured out. The negative side goes back to our ignition box. And notice on the HEI, it does the same thing. So on the factory, negative coil wire, 16, 18 gauge. I had to run it 10 because that's all I had in blue, but we'll just call it 12. This, when it gets a signal from the pickup coil, it grounds out the negative coil wire. So it is very, very important to have that grounded. So now to ground out the coil, we need a signal and we get it from our magnetic pickup. We have red and green wires. So on our magnetic pickup coil, when a little steel tooth passes that magnet, it's gonna give it a signal to ground out the coil. That also means it doesn't matter how many cylinders your engine has because it's just grounding the coil out every time one of those passes. All right, so that's what's on the car. Let's go wire it up in real life. When you wire up a balance resistor, you only have two places to wire. So you're gonna to have to use a bigger terminal and stick two wires. They look like 14, I could be wrong, whatever they are, they both fit in a number 10 terminal. Beautiful. So that's all the wiring for the ignition system. The yellow and the orange go up to the dash. We'll do that last. We need to focus on the most important thing. So the number one thing when you're wiring your ignition box is these things ground out the coil and send a spark. So if there's no ground here, how in the world are they gonna work? This is probably one of the most incorrectly wired things I've ever seen in my life. You have to run a ground straight to it right there to the body. So the MSD box and the 280Z ignition box have a dedicated ground. 
So right now we only have the engine grounded, so we have to run a ground back to the engine block right here. Whenever you paint an engine, you gotta clean off that connection and you need to test it 100%. The way you test it is just as light as possible. We got that ground wire, we can touch this engine anywhere and we'll have no resistance. Anywhere. Let's see if the car's grounded too. No, the ground tests out perfect. So we can go ahead and ground out our ignition box. So we're not talking about wiring up points ignition in this video. I have a video on points ignition, go watch that. So you have to figure out your ignition system, your pickup coil wires and where they go. I'm just showing you where they are in this car. Green up here, red down there. On this particular ignition box, it wants a negative side of the coil ran back to the ignition box. This is our main ignition on with the key wire. We ran number 12 wire. This part goes to the keys through the firewall. So notice we have two wires in one terminal because we only have two places to wire. So this is 12 volts coming in, but we have it branched off because this also turns on or feeds our ignition control box. So that's wired up. We can go ahead and screw this down. First, we have 12 volts coming in from the key, feeds the ignition control box, reduced down, and then goes to our positive side of our coil. But on a six volt system, you have the R or I position that gives it 12 volts only during cranking to the coil. On this car, it's the R wire. This side goes back to R position on the key switch. So notice how it goes to the ballast resistor right here. But then I branched it back off in the original ignition wire to the positive side of the coil. And we'll be wrapping this one up in red. Clearly see how everything wired exactly like the diagram. All right, so I still haven't wrapped it up to the dash. We'll do that in the next video. Just like the wire diagram. So I apologize, I haven't wrapped them up in their colors under the dash. We'll see that in the next video, but we need to connect ignition orange and then R position to yellow so notice how it staggered the covered terminals so nothing in there is touching and we have used all five of our terminals on our ignition switch there's nothing left but you see we only have five wires running in a dash and that's everything we need to run the car 100 percent you know and it's wired like this kind of all hanging out on purpose so that you can see it i hope you understand that so the next video we're going to be adding a junction block right here a fuse box somewhere we're gonna wire up that electric fuel pump so we can get this thing started for the first time. Well, that's it for the ignition system. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.